Hello again. Welcome to the for loops chapter in Learn to Code 1. Today we're working on activity branch out. Okay, so branch out is the challenge and the instructions say to decompose repeating patterns into functions and for loops. So we're going to use for loops and functions uh, and maybe combine combine them to come up with a solution to this puzzle here. And uh, just looking at it as a, you know, from afar, you can already tell there's going to be some use for some for loops here. There's a long walk from the base of each of these stairways up to the switch at the top of the stairs. So we're probably going to want to use a for loop and put some move forwards inside there to get up to the top of the, uh, of the steps. And then again, maybe to get back down too. All right. So let's think about how we want to do this and let's decompose this problem into smaller problems. Um, it looks like one thing, uh, again, let's I keep focusing on these stairs here because um, if we can, I think, figure out how to do one of these sets of stairs, then we can handle three of those sets of stairs. And, uh, and then it's really not that tricky to walk along and just, um, you know, call a function that handles a set of stairs. So um, let's just, uh, let's try this here for a minute. Let's just experiment a little bit and let's put a couple of move forwards in so that we get to the base of the stairs. So move forward, move forward, and then a turn right. All right, now that we're at the base of the stairs, we should be at the base of the stairs facing the stairs, I think I'm going to want to write a function that just takes care of the whole stairs. Okay, It takes care of going up the stairs, it toggles the switch, it turns around, and then it comes back down the stairs. Okay, um, And let's just name this function here func handle big stairs or something like that. Handle big stairs. All right. And uh, what should be in handle big stairs? Well, we talked about that um, we're going to want probably a for loop uh, with some move forwards in there to get up to the um, up to the switch. So um, I can add that in here for if I start typing for. Remember, I can tap down here and get a for i in one up to. Now, how many move forwards are we going to be uh, needing here? So let's count them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven move forwards will get us up to the switch. Okay, so let's say for i in the sequence one to seven, so that'll be i will be one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. <clears throat> the code we want to do in here is really just a move forward. Okay, that'll move us forward seven. And then um, we want to toggle switch when we get up to the top. Okay, so should I put that right in here? Toggle switch. Is that the right place for this? Is that the right place for the toggle switch? Well, not really. What that would say is that we want to do this sequence of commands seven times. We're going to want to move forward, toggle switch, move forward, toggle switch, and so on. That is not what we want to do. We want to move forward seven times and then toggle the switch. So this needs to come after we move forward seven times. So I'm going to drag the bottom of this loop and move it up there so that the move forward is the only thing that happens seven times. And then at the end of the for loop, when we move forward, we're going to toggle the switch. Okay. All right, um, not a bad idea to go ahead and try this. Um, even though this won't send us back here, let's, uh, let's do this and then and move forward, move forward, turn right, and then let's call handle big stairs. I don't like to write too much code before I test things out. So um, let's go ahead and test out if we get to the top of the stairs. If we do, then we're uh, a long way towards our final goal here. All right. Just called handle big stairs and he's walking up seven times in our for loop seven move forwards and a toggle switch yes very nice okay very nice now uh, there's quite a bit of code uh, left 
that will move us back down the stairs, um, we're going to need to do a turnaround, and then we're going to need to move back down the stairs again with seven move forwards in here. So um, we could put this in a new function, or we could put it right inside handle big stairs. Our handle big stairs is not very big yet. It's only got you know four lines of code, so I don't think there's anything wrong with uh, putting it right in here. So after we toggle switch, we said we want to turn around, turn around, and uh, we don't have that function yet, so we're going to have to remember to write that. After we turn around, we want to go down the hill, down the stairs again, seven times. So that's a for loop for i in the sequence one to seven. Move forward. Okay. Now, what are we going to want to do at the bottom of the stairs when we get down to the bottom of the stairs? Remember, we'll be facing away from the stairs at that point. So maybe it's a good idea to get ourselves facing uh, in the direction of the start arrow again so that we can go grab the next uh, the next set of stairs so again after the for loop here we're gonna want to do a turn right we don't want to do this every time we only want to do it after we complete the seven move forwards which are included in this in this loop right here then we want to do our turn right so that we're facing the right way. Okay. All right. Uh, so we've got to, we can try this out again. This time, handle big stairs will take care of walking us up the hill and then turning around and walking us back down the hill and then turning us to the right to get us facing the right way. Uh, one thing uh, we need to do here is we've got an unresolved identifier turn around because we don't have that function. So we need to add that one ourselves. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in front, uh, in front of this function so that it's available for handle big stairs to use. Funk turn around. And this is just going to be a turn left and another turn left. Okay, now turn around is defined so we won't get the error, error in here and we can use turnaround in that function. Okay, let's test it out. Here goes Byte, he's starting at the beginning. Move forward, move forward, turn right, and then handle big stairs. Handle big stairs, he's moving up seven move forwards, followed by a toggle switch, followed by a turnaround, followed by seven more move forwards, and then a turn right. Nice. Okay. Now he's ready to go tackle the next one. Okay. To tackle the next one, it looks like we're going to have to do a move forward, move forward, turn right. And then what do we do at this point? We call handle big stairs again to handle the second one, right? Um, but uh, notice something here. Notice something here. This set of code we just wrote to handle the second set of stairs, move forward, move forward, turn right, handle big stairs, is exactly the same as move forward, move forward, turn right, handle big stairs. Okay, uh, we would be repeating the same sequence of commands twice here, and that's usually a sign that um, you've identified a pattern, and you probably want to do this a different way. Uh, can you think of what we might want to do here instead of writing the same thing twice? Yeah, uh, let's go ahead and delete this and put this all in a for loop this sequence of commands in a for loop because we want to do this some number of times, right? So for i in the sequence one dot 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 two, we want to do this two times. Okay, we want to put this code right here all inside this for loop so that happens twice. That's a much cleaner version of our main program here. Now before we get going here, let's think ahead a little bit and how are we going to handle the third set of stairs? 
Well, that's also a, when we get back down to this spot right here, after handling the second stairs, we're going to do a turn right and we're going to do another move forward, move forward, turn right, and handle big stairs. So actually, we don't want to just do this two times. We want to do this three times. That will handle all of them. So let's go ahead and fix that. All right. Now this for loop reads very nice. It says, do this sequence of things three times. Move forward, move forward, turn right, and handle big stairs. Where handle big stairs is this abstract idea that we took care of. The details of this abstract idea, handle big stairs, are we're going to move forward seven. We're going to toggle a switch at the top of the stairs. We're going to turn around. We're going to move back down seven and then turn to the right so we're ready to keep on going. Okay? All right. We've got a, a nice set of code here, a couple of functions. One of them is a fairly serious function here that has two for loops in it, one for going up the stairs, one for going down the stairs. All right. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do a step through this code just so we can watch the for loop iterate through its three iterations here. And then we can watch our functions call, and we can watch the for loops within the function also uh, getting stepped through. Here we go. All right. Starting back at the beginning, in our first iteration of the for loop, we move forward, move forward, turn right, and then we call handle big stairs. Handle big stairs has a for loop in it that's going to just keep doing a move forward seven times. And we're almost to the top. That's 6. Here's i equals 7. We toggle the top switch. We call turn around. And we have another for loop for i in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We're going to move forward. 3, move forward 4, move forward when i is 5, move forward when i is 6, move forward when i is 7. And then at the end, we do a turn right. And we're back down into the second iteration of our main for loop, which did a move forward, move forward, turn right, handle big stairs again. And here goes byte handling big stairs. Coming back down the stairs in this for loop. Okay, turn right. Now is the third iteration of the main loop. Move forward, move forward, turn right, handle big stairs. Handle big stairs has a for loop that moves forward seven. This is i equal two i equal 3, move forward, i equal 4, move forward, i equal 5, move forward, i equal 6, move forward, and i equal 7, move forward. Then we toggle the switch and turn around, which calls our turn around function, turn left, turn left. We come back to our handle big stairs, that's where we came from, and there's our for loop where i is 1, 2, i is 3, move forward, i is 4, move forward. I is 5, move forward, I is 6, move forward, and I is 7, move forward, and we do a turn right, and that's the end of our code. All right. Great work there. Um, if you'd like a challenge, if you're feeling like you're getting this pretty well, one nice little challenge would be this function here is maybe borderline on being big, okay? It's a long function. It's doing a lot of, a lot of things. If you would like a challenge, we could break that handle big stairs up into two different functions. One function, like go upstairs, which might include this part of it here and a toggle switch, and then maybe a go downstairs, which would handle the turn around and this for loop here, um, and then combine those all together. Uh, call, call a, instead of handle big stairs being these two for loops, handle big stairs would just be a call to go upstairs, a call to going downstairs, and a turn right at the end. Okay, so just if you're up for a little challenge, you can 
go ahead and rewrite the handle big stairs to be uh, a lot smaller, maybe three lines of code, and include two more functions, go upstairs and a go downstairs. All right. Good job. We'll see you next time.